go through everything that you need. First, you need a set of pins to secure your fabric. You're gonna need fabric scissors, also a measuring tape, thread that matches your fabric, of course, your fabric. <laughs> For my project, I'm gonna be using this beautiful knit fabric. It's a rib knit in a terracotta color, but of course you can use whatever you think suits you best and suits your style. I'm not gonna specify how much fabric you're gonna need because it's very different depending on how wide your fabric is when you buy it and how big or small your body is. For this project, you're gonna need knit fabric specifically and it is preferable that your fabric has a medium stretch factor. Along with your instructions, you will also be provided a fabric stretch chart that will help you figure out how much stretch your fabric actually has. Let me teach you how to use it. Okay, let's learn how to calculate our stretch factor. We're gonna start by measuring a four inches wide piece of your fabric we're gonna take one of the edges and place it right at this mark you can see that if i want to i can stretch the fabric a lot but it's gonna deform everything so this is not what i want to do is place it in the mark arrow and while i hold it in one side what i want to do is to place the right edge of the fabric right where the first arrow is and hold the left edge with my finger then i'm gonna stretch my fabric a little bit until where the second arrow ends you see that the fabric will stretch but not too much and there will not be enough to deform it so i'm gonna keep on trying third time left edge at the first arrow right edge one more time, right edge at the first arrow, left edge holding with my finger, and I'm gonna stretch the fabric once again. Okay, this looks pretty good, but just make sure I'm gonna try it one more time at the 75% stretch factor. You already know what to do, right edge at the arrow, left edge holding with my finger and i'm gonna stretch it all the way to the second arrow and you're gonna see that it's completely deformed so i was right this fabric has 35 percent stretch factor and this is how you use our stretch factor chart you're also gonna need needles they are special for your knit fabric these are called ballpoint needles but why do I need a special needle? Well, the way knit fabrics are made is different from the way woven fabrics are made. When weaving knits, it's made in a way that if you use a regular needle, you will actually damage the fabric, maybe um, cut the bristles instead of regularly sewing. So the ballpoint needle is a little bit rounder and it'll provide you a point that goes through the knit without damaging it. The size of your needle also matters. My size is a 12 slash 80 needle. Um, this is for lightweight fabrics. If you use a very sheer fabric or if you use a medium weight fabric, it's gonna differ. So it's very important that you ask your fabric store what type of needle is best for the one you picked. We provide this chart along with your instructions that goes through every type of knit and needle size you will need. Something else we need to talk about is seam allowance. Your hoodie pattern can be provided for an extra of 50 cents with your seam allowance already our standard is 3 eighths of an inch, which is equivalent to one centimeter. But your pant pattern will not be provided with the seam allowance, so you must add it manually. If you don't know what seam allowance is, don't worry, I've got you covered. Seam allowance is the distance between the edge of the fabric you cut and the place where you should actually put your needle through while sewing. This is made to prevent your fabric from fraying. 
you will also of course need your bootstrap fashion custom fit patterns there are ai generated ready in 20 minutes delivered to your email all of the links you need will be listed as you can see most of these materials are very simple and if you've been sewing for a while you probably have them with you already this project does not need any type of a specific closure or sewing foot elastics anything like that it's very simple and inexpensive two more very important things you're gonna need to be able to follow up with this course are positivity and being eager to learn new things let's talk about patterns in the pants pattern you're gonna be provided with three pieces the first one is your wristband it should be cut on fold the further side of the pattern should be aligned with this one and the gray line should follow the zero don't forget to put your seam allowances here here and here as this side will be folded you should not put any seam allowances another part of the pant pattern is the back panel this is it your figure is different of the front pattern first because there is an angle at the waist and this curve is more accentuated you should cut two of them and the grain line of your fabric should follow the zero the third panel is the front one it looks like this it should be cut twice two different parts this is the grain line and there's something very different about this pattern that I want you guys to notice. You will see when you get yours that there is a line here and a line here. This happens because this pattern is actually three in one. You can have a long size pattern of your pants. You can also have a midi size and shorts all in just one bottom. I actually made two different lengths of pants for this pattern. I made a maximum and a middle length just to show you guys how it could look in different perspectives. Now let's get to know the different panels that form our sweater pattern. First one is the front. It should be cut once on the fold. The fold should be right here and we also mark the grain line of the fabric you'll see that it has a few notches for you to place these leaves it's a haglund leaf um, and you'll also notice that there are four corners marked here this is where you should put your pockets if you decide to put them on hi lumi I think my cat wants to join us. Mm, I love you, baby girl. Say hi. Hi! <laughs> so, the next pattern piece is the back. Here it is. It looks pretty much like the front. There is a notch here, and here goes the gray line. It also should be cut once on fold. Here goes the fold of the fabric. This is the sleeve. This would actually be cut twice. I suggest to put a little F in the front and a B in the back to make it easier for you to understand which side is which. It should be cut twice. And this is the grain line. This is the neck. It should be cut like this on fold and this is the grain line it's a very beautiful long kind of turtleneck that you could show you could actually use kind of like, like a hood like putting it over your hair a little bit i think it's so fancy and the last piece is our pocket notice that 
the seam allowance here is bigger because you have to finish the top of the pocket that's going to be open.